Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Saturday, January 15th, and let us begin as we always begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. And during these times, and we were an ordinary time, I should mention that within the, the Mass book, there are different kinds of intentions, different kinds of Masses that you can say. So this, or services as I'm doing. So in this one today is number 22, it's for those in public office. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of people, the insurance of peace, the freedom of religion, may through your gift be made secure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the first book of Samuel. There was a stalwart man from Benjamin named Kish, who was the son of Abiel son of Zeror, son of Bekorah, son of Aphia, a Benjaminite. He had a son named Saul, who was a handsome young man. There was no other child of Israel more handsome than Saul. He stood head and shoulders above the people. Now, the donkeys of Saul's father, Kish, had wandered off. Kish said to his son Saul, take one of the servants with you, and go out and hunt for them. According, accordingly, they went through the hill country of Ephraim and through the land of Shalisha. Not finding them there, they continued through the land of Shalom without success. They also went through the land of Benjamin, but they failed to find the animals. When Samuel caught sight of Saul, the Lord assured him, this is the man of whom I told you. He is to govern my people. Saul met Samuel in the gateway and said, Please tell me where the seer lives. Samuel answered Saul, I am the seer. Go up ahead of me to the high place and eat with me today. In the morning, before dismissing you, I will tell you whatever you wish. Then from a flask he had with him, Samuel poured oil on Sam Saul's head. He also kissed him, saying, The Lord anoints you commander over his heritage. You are, the govern, you are to govern the people's, Lord's people, Israel, and to save them from the grasp of their enemies round about. They will be the sign for you that the Lord has anointed the commander over his heritage. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. O Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. In your victory, how greatly he rejoices. He has granted him his heart's desire. You refuse not the wish of his lips. Lord, in your strength, the, God, your, the king is glad. For you welcomed him with goodly blessings. You placed on his head a crown of pure gold. He asked life of you. You gave him length of days forever and ever. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. Great is his glory in your victory, majesty and splendor. You conferred upon him, for, made, for you made him a blessing forever. You gladdened him with the joy of your face. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor and to proclaim liberty to captives. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went out along the sea. All the crowd came to him, and he taught them. As he passed by, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the customs post. Jesus said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners sat with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. Some scribes who were Pharisees saw that Jesus was eating with sinners and tax collectors and said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard this and said to them, those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. I did not come to call the righteous. I came to call sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today in our first reading, we hear this thing about the flask of oil and, and the anointing. And if you look, I'm going to point to it right here. You see this little case? Some of you probably wondered what this little case is on the wall in the church. It contains three oils. It contains chrism oil, which is used for ordinations, baptisms, all sorts of things. We have the oil of infirmorum, which is for healing of the sick, for anointing of the sick, and for extreme unction, which is last rites. And it's all, there is also an oil of catechumens, which is used for the, the catechumen rite when people become you know, Catholic, when they convert in, or become Christian, convert to the faith. Um, I point those out because, again, sometimes we hear this, that you know, these things... The, all of these things that the church, that the Catholic Church does, they, you know, they do, they have all this stuff that they do, and you know, they put oil. You know, where does that all come from? You know, they just make that stuff up. You know, you know, we don't need to do that. All we need to do is hear a good sermon and good music, and we're all set. Well, that's the reason we do this. You heard the reading today. The anointing. The anointing goes all the way back to the Old Testament. We follow that lineage of the great people of the Bible all the way from the beginning. So we are unlike what some people will tell you, very scripture-oriented. In fact, we probably are more scripture-oriented than many Christian faiths because we continue to follow traditions that go all the way back to the beginning of the Hebrew people leading from the Old Testament into the New Testament. Just an observation for going forward. Um, servants of God. Um, my uh, graduating class, my... Uh, class, the people that I were ordained with, my ordination class, they would give each one of them a name. Our ordination class was Dorothy Day, who was a blessed but was not made a saint yet, I hope someday. But there are various servants of God like Dorothy Day, uh, St. Teresa of Calcutta, uh, St. Damien of Molokai, all understood Jesus' words in today's gospel. Those who are well do not need a physician. But the sick do. I did not come to call the righteous. I came to call sinners. These holy men and women reached out to people who were homeless, who were hungry, people who struggled with addiction, people who lived with disease, and people who were dying. They shared God's love with people who were often overlooked by other members of society, so-called the decent members of society, and sometimes people who were even overlooked by the church. Remember that uh, Mo, uh, Father Damien worked with lepers, and of course they were excommunicated, not excommunicated, but separated from everybody. Um, these people understood that you did not have to be perfect themselves to help others, and I think that's a disease that many of us we don't want to get involved with the church sometimes because we feel we're not worthy. I think that's probably one of the worst phrases that was ever coined in the world. I am not worthy. In God's eyes, we are all worthy. And know that. In God's eyes, you are worthy. In God's eyes, we are all worthy of what he calls us to. Um, and like I said, these, these great saints or people who will hopefully be saints someday knew they didn't have to be perfect themselves. Rather, 
They simply knew the importance of naming and restoring and protecting the God-given dignity of all people, that everybody was a child of God. They found strength in Jesus' example and drew strength from the sacraments, their community, and prayer. Are we willing? Are we willing like Dorothy Day, like Teresa of Calcutta, like Damien? Those of you who don't know, Damien worked in a leper colony in Hawaii. Are we willing to see the goodness of God's presence in all the people we encounter? We have a homeless kitchen here. And sometimes it's a little tough to see God, but God is there in every single one of them. As we are all sick and we are all sinners in some way, God comes to each of us, and we're called to go out to others. Amen. Jesus prayed that they all may be one as you, Father, and I, that as you and I are one. Bringing our hopes and prayers for the church, we pray. That the gospel of Christ may be the center of our life together as church and community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the gospel of Christ may be the center of our life together as church and community. We pray to the Lord. I said that already. That Pope Francis, our bishop, and our all ministers of the church be compassionate fishers of souls for God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the nation and peoples of the world may live in peace, working together to protect the dignity and rights of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who walk in darkness, the darkness of illness, the darkness of addiction, the darkness of abuse, that they may see the great light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful who have died, and especially those from our parish, that they may dwell forever in the house of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of light, dispel the darkness of our self-centeredness and ignorance. May these prayers we offer together be the first light of your presence in our homes, in our workplaces, and in our communities. We offer these prayers to you, O God, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us come together as we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, who is the offerings presented here, nourish the human race with food, and renew it with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Happy Saturday. Have a very nice weekend. We'll see you in church. Amen.